we're gonna learn more about furries. I guess my furry video wasn't enough. Reina feels the need to torture me with the eight types of furry species. All right, you might you might be interested in this one, Jack. The furry fandom is home to. Do I really have to watch it? the seven minutes of this, shit, dude? Everyone's gonna judge. Doesn't help that I have the furry tag up and people don't realize that was a joke. God dang it! All right, whatever. Let's make, let's just get it over with. Got to rip the bandaid off, chat. The furry fandom is home to all sorts of creative and interesting people who also happen to love anthro animal characters. But, did you know that there are different kinds of furries out there? Hey everyone, I'm Soren, and today we're going to be talking about the 8 different kinds of furries based on their species. The term furry is typically used as a blanket statement to describe any anthropomorphic animal within the fandom. But, not every furry you'll meet will actually have fur. Although we say the furry fandom, that doesn't mean that your fursona has to have fur, or that you have to be interested in anthro characters with fur. The furry fandom is, is very open in terms of creativity, to... and there's certainly no limit on whatever animal you oh, choose your fursona to be. God, so if you're thinking about making your own fursona, shit. but you really just love dragons, then go for it! Despite that, there are still some technical terms for us to call these different categories of furries, and it all comes down to whatever species they are. So let's get started. Up first, we have furries. Like I said before, the term furry is often used as a blanket term for the fandom. That's because it's the most common types of fursonas you'll find. These- for, for anyone watching this on YouTube, if I put this up, this gets recommended to me by, by my community. I'm not doing this in my own free will. I'm being forced to watch this sh all right? I'm not going to get butt hurt if you don't want- No, 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 you put it in React Channel, we're watching it. You, you put me through this, I'm putting you guys through this, alright? We get tortured together, chat. Alright, here we go, let's get back into it. Personas are of anthropomorphic mammals, their main trait being, you guessed it, having fur. The most common species you'll find in this category are foxes, canines, and felines. Mm. In the second category, we have scalies. Scalies are the category of people who have fursonas with scales. Some species in this category include lizards, dinosaurs, and an extremely popular choice, dragons. I f***ing told you, chat. Dragonflight is a furry game, alright? WoW has been... It's been infiltrated by the furry community. That's why we're all playing as dragons that look just like this. You guys thought I was a conspiracy theorist. That's the that that's what it is, chat. Alright, let's move on. It's also worth mentioning a subcategory within dragon personas themselves, as many people like the idea of having fluffy dragon personas. These take the cool looks and aesthetics of a dragon and mix them with the cute and cuddliness of fluffy animals. Oh, they are cute. Next up, we have avians. Avians are fursonas that are different species of birds or feature bird-like appearances. So this includes things like talons, beaks. Wait, wasn't expecting it that quick? What the fuck is that? Is that supposed to be a pigeon or an owl? Dude, like, we're, they're probably saving the weird ones for la the weird ones out of the first- Oh my god, I I'm scared to get to the end of this. Alright, let's keep going. Oh god. Is Bonk and Kizzy watching? I don't want to piss them off. Alright, give me a second. feathers, and of course, flying. <laughs> Unless you're a flightless bird, that is. Some noteworthy features of avians are this the way people depict their fursona's arms. Since avians have wings instead of arms, you'll see a few adaptations people have made for their own comfort. So if you're planning on having an avian fursona, definitely look into some of these options. Yep. Most people choose to go the scientific route, and just opt for normal bird wings with very minimal adaptations. However, some people choose to have what are called feather fingers, where the tips of the wings have specific feathers that act as fingers. This gives it a more toony look and appeals to people that want more dexterity with their wings. Wow. Next, we have talon arms, where the avian has forearms that greatly resemble that of a human's. Usually, this takes the form of another set of talons for the avian that That's acts as the arms and hands for them. Finally, we have back wings, where the avian has a nearly identical anthropomorphized form like most furries, but they have wings on their back. 
This resembles a more angel-like appearance, since it features full dexterity for the avian's arms and These legs the while still retaining wings and the ability to fly. Sword. In fourth, you'll find fishies. Fishies are oh, people who have personas of aquatic life, such as various types of tropical fish and sharks. And yes, technically fish have scales and could theoretically be classified as scalies, but them being aquatic life forms gives them a unique situation. To make this category a bit easier to understand, think of this group as including the majority of aquatic life. Some examples for exceptions to this rule are dolphins and whales, since they're aquatic mammals and technically have fur. Many anthrofish personas have oh a mostly human-like appearance and body- Why? You can't just tell me it's just about fursuits now. I'm seeing like combinations of like other fetishes slowly manifesting in these drawings, chat. I'm just saying. Yeah, this is definitely Gasbone. Well, let me go back one. There was another fat one. Um, yeah, that that's Gasbone too. You know what? All of them are Gasbone. Fuck it. Yeah, they're all they're all Gasbone. You gotta admire the creativity if it wasn't, like, as horrifying as it is. Alright, let's keep going. ...mostly human-like appearance and body proportions, and feature a tail that acts as their fin. In addition, some of them have more fins on various body parts, such as their arms and legs. Moving on, we have the invertebrates. Invertebrates are people who have personas of species that don't have backbones, such as cephalopods and insects. A notable subcategory within this group that we'll be going over are buggies. There isn't exactly a proper universal term for people who have personas based on bugs or insects, but there have been many fan dubs of the name. These include things like buggies, arthropods, crawlies, and a bunch more. But for now, wow. I'm going to be referring to them as buggies. The reason these are such a popular choice among invertebrates is because of just how much variety there is within the insect world. Buggies are people with bug or insect personas and include the various features based on their chosen species. Many bug personas retain things like wings, antennas, multiple legs, and pretty much anything else that- Alright. I will admit, these are- like, if you're able to make like a costume, like a fursuit out of something like this, like, I, I give you props. Mad respect for finding a way or like people that can actually do that. There is no way that's cheap. That's gotta be expensive as and my camera's screwed up. Give me a second, chat. I'm gonna need a shot. Six and a half hours later. Alright, we're back. Sorry about that, chat. We had camera issues. Uh, yeah, let's go watch the buggies. That insect has. The structure of bug personas are extremely varied due to the sheer amount of species to choose from. Yep. But for the most part, they have a humanoid shape as a base and add any of their special features. So a moth persona would have multiple limbs, wings, and that bulb looking thing on their butts. Alrighty. I wonder if there's like anyone out there who's like a centipede persona and there's, it's like a suit, but there's like three of them and they just have to like connect to each other by, never mind. Maybe there's a movie on that. I don't know. We've covered all the categories for species that exist, but what about the ones that are completely made up? Category number six, fictional species. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I know dragons don't exist either, but they already have their own section. This section is for people who have personas of a species from a fictional source, like a video game or a TV yeah, show. Yeah, be like the human. Two examples of these are lombaxes and pokesonas. Lombaxes are a fictional species. Yeah, Lombax is from Ratchet and Clank. That was a good game, by the way. You should play it. It's pretty good. Pretty, uh... There's a few of them, but, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the first three. Alright, let's keep going. ...species from the video game Ratchet and Clank and have feline-like appearances. Pokesonas are personas based off the Pokémon from the titular famous video game franchise. Many of the species here already have anthropomorphic depictions, so it's not exactly difficult to adapt these. one into a persona. They're treated just like any other kind of persona species, and the only difference for this category is their origin, since, you know, you can't exactly find them in the real world. Speaking of not being in the real world, category number seven, fandom created species. The furry fandom truly has some of the most creative and brilliant minds in the whole world, and this category is proof of that. 
This group know, is for like people who have personas animation. based on species that were created within the furry fandom. Some popular species here include protogens, Dutch angel dragons, and circles. Dutch ovens. Finally, we have hybrid personas. Wait a second, did I just see cheese? We're back. Finally, oh, we have hybrid personas. I swear on species I just saw that cheese. Were created within the furry fandom. Some popular species here include pro- Why is that in his ass crack? Weird. Protogens, Dutch angel dragons, and circles. There was cheese! Why was there cheese there? Here, we're slowing this down. Hold on, give me a second. A few moments later. Here, Here we go. We're doing, we're learning zoology. Protogens, Dutch angel dragons. And sir, I knew I didn't make it up, chat. I knew I, f I saw cheese. You guys didn't believe me, but I saw it. Circles. Finally, we have hybrid personas. Now, if you're still thinking about what animal your fursona should be and think that it has to fit in one of these categories, don't worry. Your fursona can fit into multiple groups if you want to be super creative, and the best way to do that is by making a hybrid fursona. Hybrids are fursonas that take two <laughs> or more sorry, animals like and mix and match one. different aspects of them to make a brand new species. These are easily one of the most fun ways to design your fursona. <laughs> Remember that there's no limit to how many species you can mix together, so feel free what to be experimental and maybe you'll end up creating Literally a brand a... new combination. Knowing these terms Literally is all a, well and good, uh, but keep in mind that these terms wombat. were created by the furry fandom for the furry fandom, so you don't have to use any of these categories if you don't want to. Please remember to respect anyone who may not want to identify as one of these categories, or may not want you to refer to them as that name. The yeah, free fandom is a place of free self-expression, so you shouldn't let labels and limitations hold you down if you don't want them to. If you don't feel comfortable labeling your fursona as any of these categories, then don't. At the end of the day, there are no rules when it comes to making a fursona. So feel free to call yourself whatever you it want. Seems to be it is your creation after all. Go crazy and make brand new hybrids or a whole new species if you'd like. And keep in mind you don't have to follow what science says. If you want to be a purple penguin with rainbow wings and can fly at 100 miles per hour, be my guest. Actually, please do that. I really want to see that now. But what do you think? Do you have any unique names that you like to call certain species? Let me know down in the comments. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, see ya. See ya. Alright, well... Thank you for that, Reina. I just come out two years ago, 57,000 views. I don't know, I'm just curious. Um, I don't even know if I want to go into the comments section here. We'll just avoid that. All right, well, thank you for that, Reina. I appreciate that, I think. It was definitely something. That was something. Anyways, that's going to do it for today's video, everyone. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe below. It helps me out a lot. If you didn't like the video... Like and subscribe anyways and leave a comment telling me why you fucking hated it. Now that I'm finally settled into my new house, I'm going to try to upload once or twice a week. We'll see how it goes. If you want to join us live, just click the link below and you can join us at my Twitch channel where I stream every Sunday starting around 5 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and going until whenever I get through all the videos. Anyways, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Hope you have an amazing week. I'll see you at the next video. Peace out, everyone. Bye.